Switch chat room, take one. Can a person be born Christian? I don't believe so. No. No. No, I don't think a person can be born Christian. I feel like they definitely have to choose a relationship with Jesus and grow on that themselves rather than being like forced into it in any way. Yeah, I agree with that. Like you're not born best friends with your best friend, if that makes any sense. Yeah, like you have to grow that relationship. What does it take to be a Christian? I think it's it's believing Jesus died on the cross for your sins and it's also a relationship with God and that being, you know, ongoing and not just for a small little period. Yeah. Yeah. And being like he was, you know, he would go out um, fishing for people, people that needed him. He also um, was a servant when people thought that he was going to be like some type of king in a way. Us as Christ followers going out and doing that also shows his love in that way too. Do you think that there are some parts of your life that should be influenced by faith and others that shouldn't? I think your whole life should be influenced by faith, honestly. Like, I agree. As soon as you accept Jesus into your life, He kind of guides every choice. At least for me, I know that to be true. Since, yeah. he, since he created our life and He's the creator, then yeah, He should definitely be the one that makes the decisions for all, all parts of your life. At the center of it? Yep. I can't think of a part of my life where He doesn't have like an influence. Yeah. yeah. Who or what have you looked to to help you figure out what it means to be a Christian? My church leader, 1,000%, and also my youth pastor has been like a big influence in my life. Any pastor or leader I've had. I think older friends have definitely influenced me and kind of taught me and also pastors. Yeah, for me it's the same. Um, Most of y'all youth pastors, people at church have definitely helped me grow. Church camp has helped me grow a lot as well. What's something you wouldn't understand about being a Christian if it wasn't for their example? I definitely wouldn't have grasped the idea of grace and how um, much it's given and also what it means to be, you know, um, forgiven, for God to forgive you. I definitely um, learned that from older people in my church, kind of my friends showing me that. Yeah. Being intentional yeah. with other people. Um, I think that's really important. And I'm not saying like the Bible glances over that, but it's, it's easier to see that whenever you're experiencing it. Whether that be the way you serve others or anything like that, it's all Christ-centered and you're trying to do everything that He would have done. At Switch, we say that discipleship is the process of becoming like Jesus for the sake of others. What parts of that resonate with you and what parts feel really hard? Something that I don't think is wrong, but I don't necessarily like is that knowing that we will never be perfect which is kind of hard to know, mm-hmm. but um, it's, it's also good to know that we're doing this for the sake of others, not for ourselves. We're doing this so then we can uh, save people from going to hell. What we are all trying to do at the end of the day, once you are a Christ follower in a leadership position is growing His kingdom no matter what. And so that can be really easy for some people and it might be harder for others. I know for me, I do struggle a little bit, whether that be like at school or anything like that, just because there are people that are gonna make fun of you for that no matter what, so. I think it can be tricky because some people, especially for me, I feel like my relationship with God is never like good enough to be this person that goes after others. So I'm like, no, I gotta better myself first. But it's always, that's, you're always gonna be bettering yourself with a relationship. It's never gonna end. So eventually you have to go out and be a disciple no matter you know how close or how far you are away from God. I feel like that's also the devil trying to attack you in some way also because as soon as you accept Christ into your life, you are fully prepared to tell your story on how he has changed your life or impacted you. And that can change someone else's life as well. So I think it isn't, you're not prepared enough. It's just, are you willing to? Yeah, that's a battle that I've had, that I've struggled with, with thinking that like there has to be like a spot that you have to be at before you can like just go out there and start sharing, you know? Yeah. But there's not. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from this conversation? That I'm not alone whenever like um, I say that I get scared to try to get people to come to church or even to know Jesus because it is kind of an awkward and difficult conversation to have at times and just knowing that like it's not just me that gets afraid of that is really helpful and encouraging. I think something I realized that we're not building relationships with Christ just for ourselves 
but we're building relationships with Christ for the world, mm -hmm. so then the world can have a relationship with Christ. Yeah. And when you look at that, it can become, for people that are really selfless, it can become easier to get a relationship with God because you know you're doing it for the people around you and not just for yourself. Yeah. yeah. What is a misconception about being a Christian that you need to let go of? That I have to be perfect. A uh, misconception about being a Christian that I used to have is having to be perfect all the time. Being perfect and sinless. That just because I'm young, my story cannot impact other people. 